Welcome to the Electronics Tools for Beginners video series. I'm going to be doing a video every single day, so make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss those. Also be a playlist down in the description and at the end of the video as well to go and watch more of the video series. So make sure you check them out. So in this video I'm going to talk about oscilloscopes. I am actually a bit fortunate I've got five or six oscilloscopes, I'm not actually sure. <laughs> I've got a, a small selection of them, different types. On my bench here I have three set up all the time. I always have three scopes on here. I probably could get away with just having two. Sometimes it's handy having three though, different setups. You can have one set up to a certain function and just use that for one thing and have a scope for something else, you know, it's quite handy, right? Do you need one of these modern types of oscilloscopes like these, like these key sites or these signals for example? Do you need this style? Potentially yes, potentially no. It depends on what you want to use the scope for, what you intend to do as far as your work. If you're going to do anything which involves any kind of serial decoding or using like SPI or I squared C and that sort of stuff, then you probably do want one of these more modern scopes because they do decoding and things like that. You can actually monitor the waveforms and actually tell you what the actual data going across the network is. So these kinds of situations, you probably do want one of these newer scopes. If you're not going to be doing any kind of serial work, then you may not need one this new, you can potentially get a much older one. I actually have an old Tektronix 2432A, which is a 300 megahertz digitizing scope. It doesn't compare to these, but it's a Tektronix, you know, it's a high quality scope. And this thing's ancient now, it still works. I've done some videos on that. There'll be some videos linked down below for these scopes. I think this one here, the Keysight one, I actually won that from Keysight. I bought that one and I won this one from Signal, which is quite nice. The advantages and disadvantages, it depends on the feature set their speeds, their sample rates, their overall bandwidth capabilities, um, whether they've got an AWG built into which is an arbitrary waveform generator. I don't know if that one's got one, but these two definitely have AWGs built into them. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to keep track. But I actually prefer, personally, AWG to be separate. I like to have a separate generator. It's convenient having it into these units because it's one less thing you have on your bench. Yeah, you know, so having it built in is quite nice. There's different types, so you've got these modern types, you've got the older types like the old Tektronix, like I mentioned. We've also got an old analog scope, an old Dick Smith branded the analog scope, which is 60 megahertz. Sometimes analog is really handy to have. Although that said, I have got used to not using that one now, and I can do everything I need to do on these. But if you don't need to do any high frequency stuff, and like anything 100 megahertz or above, then there's no reason we can't use an older analog scope and pick one up quite cheaply. They are cheap to get these older style ones because nobody really wants them because they're big and they're old technology and you know if it wants these new fangled things now. You may not actually need one of these if you're just doing some basic waveform measurements and just trying to look at waveforms and check signals, check signal integrity and timings and you know things like that, then you may not actually need one of these modern ones. I'd say if you've got the budget then get one by all means. Another thing which is out there is USB based oscilloscopes. So it's basically a box which is on a USB cable, you plug some probes into it and you use software on your computer instead to look at the waveform and basically control it. Those can be cheaper, a bit more versatile in some ways. They've got feature sets which can be upgradable as well later on down the road, you know, they might do software updates. But then you also need to have a computer. Now that can be beneficial too as it can do stuff on the computer and um, you're leveraging the power of the computer to do some things and you can do waveform catches and screenshots a bit easier if you want to do that sort of thing. I mean, you can do that. I think all of these can do that as well, actually. Um, these got, I know the two signals got built in web servers, so I can actually view these on a browser. Just go to web browser and actually view these screens and control them from a web browser. <laughs> That's quite handy. There's also software for these. I think the C key site's got something too, I'm not quite sure. I don't tend to use it for that. But these USB oscilloscopes, you then have this drawback of you have to have a computer. You've got no choice, but you have to have one, which takes up a bit more bench space. If you've already got a computer there next to your bench, then it may not even matter if it's like right in arm's reach anyway, it, it probably be beneficial, it might actually be a space saving, but in my case for me it's, it doesn't suit me. And you can see I've got a bunch of tools across here which hinder access from time to time. The one thing you may notice is all my scopes here have got these little rubber plugs on them, all the ports are covered up, that's to help keep them clean, keep dust out of them and that sort of stuff, it just keeps them a bit nicer, you know, look after them, look after your gear, it will last longer. Only having them powered up when you need to have them powered up, that sort of stuff. You know, don't even sit in there running all day for no reason. You know, there's no point wearing the fans out and whatever. You know, burning it in screens because the backlights only last for so long as well. They last for a long time, but if you don't have it sitting there for days on end doing nothing, that's that much more time than you gain. Anyway, I'm waffling. Things you can do on a oscilloscope: you can measure AC, DC, frequency, peak-to-peak -peak measurements, RMS. You can do calculations. You can compare waveforms. You can check 
check timing and sequencing, decoding. I mean, look at this. You can see over here all these different measurements that this scope is currently set up to do. Right? That's the ones that's currently set up for. Just automatic measurements that just sit there all the time and just does them. So due to cycles and things like that, really handy. You also do power measurements. These two scopes here have also got the option of logic analyzers. So there's actually a logic probe you can plug in. I don't have the one for this one. This one here actually built my own. There's a guy who did a project on the EVBOG forum and I built my own version. I actually did a video on it. So if you want to look for that logic probe, DIY logic probe, I built my own for this because they're fairly expensive to buy. And that means you can do 16 channels of logic analyzer function on the scope as well. That's another little bonus. Logic analyzers, very handy for if you're doing multiple kinds of digital signaling or diagnostics or design. Something you can also do with oscilloscopes in many cases, but not always. Depends, you might pay to do some homework on this and a bit of research. Is sometimes you actually buy a lower model, so like a 100 megahertz version, which is what both of these are, both 100 megahertz versions. In fact, so is that. All three of them are 100 megahertz versions. And you can do upgrades to them. So sometimes it's paid upgrades, you can actually buy a license and you can upgrade later on. So if you don't need the full bandwidth, you can get a lower model and buy a license later on. If you look on the EV blog forum, there's, I don't completely endorse this, but there's actually hacks you can do to expand the bandwidth. So if you wanted to get more bandwidth out of your scope to get higher frequency capability, if you've got the option, go to the manufacturer, buy a upgrade key. In some cases that's not actually possible, there's no actual upgrade path unless you hack the scope. The first option should always be go and buy an official license and get your scope upgraded legally and officially. It depends on the situations, I suppose. Well, these scopes these days are pretty nice in the feature sets they actually have. All three of these are built in frequency counters, for example. And so you can actually get a frequency display. So if you're not too worried about the true accuracy, you know, down to hertz, then the frequency display on these scopes is perfectly adequate. They're perfectly close enough to do most things. If you want to be really fussy about frequency accuracy and get right down to millihertz, stuff like that, then you need a proper frequency counter. A standalone one, and those are fairly easy to get. There's lots of options out there, even you know, stuff in China these days you can get as well, which are reasonably okay if they've been calibrated properly. Check out the playlist over here for other things to watch a bit in this video series. Here's your playlist over here, YouTube things you should watch. There's a subscribe link up here, which I think you should click on to subscribe and see more of my videos. And over here is a Patreon support link if you feel like doing some donations to the channel and help me to make more videos. And you also get some perks when I do stuff on there too. Good luck.